Well, good morning, church, and welcome to our midweek devotion. It is Wednesday again. I am really trying to do good uh, in this new year about making sure these come out um, on time and, and weekly. I know the very first week of the year was, was a miss, uh, but I'm hoping to get make this a consistent part of my, my routine, a spiritual discipline, if you will. That's something we'll talk about later on in this season in Lent, probably focusing on spiritual disciplines, and, and we'll have some wonderful conversation around that. But uh, I come to you this morning with a word of scripture that I wanted to share. Um, one of the Psalms. And, you know, the Psalms, they're written for so many occasions, so many emotions, so many different things. And, and it's a good place to turn when we're at a loss of words. There's some books out there that are a psalm for every day or a psalm for every, uh, you know, purpose. And um, I was thinking uh, last night into this morning about the Psalms and using them to reflect on scripture today. And Psalm 118 is the one that came to me, and largely because, this may come as no surprise, there's a couple songs that have been written that come out of Psalm 18. And in the midst of it, as we'll read it in a minute, but in the midst of um, life, in the midst of everything going on, you know, folks that are not doing well physically, that were, you know, having to visit uh, at home or in the hospital and hospice care, um, folks that are dealing with, you know, all kinds of issues, um, the, the pastoral things that come up, uh, which really are just life, their life. But for Christians, they become a pastoral issue where we focus on, on praying over those people. We focus on trying to meet their needs as the church, as opposed to just going about our lives and, and trying to meet them socially. So, so we allow issues, and as they should, to become church issues, pastoral issues for us to pray over um, and come together as a body and support people. And that's what we're called to do. So if someone is, you know, let's say in the hospital, we gather around them, we pray over them, we add them to our prayer list, and we have a prayer team that daily is praying for folks. Um, if someone is homebound, we we will, you know, bring them meals, we'll check in on them. Uh, if someone has had some kind of accident um, and, and, you know, is in need, we'll, we'll take meals, we'll pray, we'll do those things. That's what the church does, is it comes together as a community and, and to support each other in their needs. And that happens in, in times of, of all kinds of times with all kinds of issues. And, and I spent some time yesterday with a family that had some pastoral needs. And, and that was where, again, this, this psalm was echoing in the back of my head. Um, because it can be difficult. It can be difficult at times to, to you know, face the challenges of life that, that we all face. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to you Psalm 118. It's a little bit longer. It's, you know, 29 uh, verses. Um, but I would encourage you, if you, if you have a minute, uh, grab your Bible and, and read Psalm 118 as well. Uh, it will probably sound familiar. There are some familiar verses, as I said, that have been turned into songs over the years. Um, but, but follow along if you can, um, or, or go back, you know, after this video and pick up Psalm 118 and, and read through it as well. The subtitle given by the ESV is, His Steadfast Love Endures Forever. And that should be a reassurance to us um, that, that God's love for us, no matter what, is steadfast. It, it holds true and strong, and it will last forever, no matter what we do. And, and we do some pretty bad things. Um, uh, but let's, let's jump into this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. 
glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate to the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Again, just a, a very reassuring psalm, a very reassuring passage that no matter what, uh, even when David was surrounded, when everyone was out to get him, when, when literally countries of, of armies were trying to attack him, the Lord provided and, and the Lord was with him throughout it all. And it, of course it says, you know, he was still punished at times. There were still consequences, but the Lord was still with him. He didn't abandon him. He didn't hand him over to death. And uh, I think we just need to remember that in the midst of some of the difficult times we face, um, that when we pray to the Lord, he is with us. When our heart is truly turned to him, when we're in relationship with him, he is with us. And, and that is just a wonderful, wonderful thing for us to remember and know as Christians that we are never abandoned. We always have the Lord. And therefore, we should always have the church as well. We shouldn't abandon others. Well, we're going to go into a moment of prayer here in a second, but I did want to give you just two quick reminders. Um, there's a number of things coming up. This Sunday is our annual meeting. We'll have one service at 10 o'clock with the meeting to follow, immediately to follow in the church. Um, we, we don't have a, a reception afterwards as we normally do because we have a bigger event coming up in February. And um, so anyway, we'll have the annual meeting. Now, the big part of that, of course, is getting the annual report um, and we'll, we'll share some of those reports with you briefly. Uh, but we also need to vote on delegates for diocesan convention. So if you are interested in going to convention as a delegate or alternate, um, if you have never done that and want to be a part of the life of the church and how we operate um, throughout at a, at a diocesan level, um, I would encourage you to, to seek nomination um, or, or speak to others and nominate them um, because we will need, we have two delegates and two alternates each year, and it's a two-year term. So we'll need two people to come on as, as delegates and two people to come on as alternates. Um, February 5th is our big celebration event. That's that's what you heard me alluding to. Um, we're prepping for that. We've got a lot of things underway for that. It's going to be a great time, and I'm really excited about celebrating the past 170, almost 171 years now, and, and getting ready for what the Lord has for us next, preparing for the future. We've got some exciting things to announce that week. Um, so those are coming up. There's a few other things in the meantime. We've got a men's event coming up, not this week, uh, but the following week, um, and, and just regular services that Sunday in between as well. And, uh, and we're prepping for Lent. And when Lent comes around, we're going to have some Wednesday luncheons going on. Um, we'll do a kind of a special series uh, then. And, uh, and we'll have um, Wednesday nights will be kicking off again soon as well. I'm just trying to, to nail down exactly with, with Easter being a little earlier this year. It kind of Holy Week and all that kind of gets in the way and, and then trying to figure out the schedule of how we're going to do that. But expect some announcements um, as far as Lenten plans as well as Wednesday evening plans here in the next week or so. Well, let us pray. I'm, I'm using uh, colic number 70 today. It's for inner, inner renewal through the word. 
And again, as I was thinking about Psalm 118 and how important that is for us to remember um, God's steadfast love enduring for us, it's important for us to go back to those passages we don't often read. Um, I used to spend a lot of time in the Psalms and I've kind of gotten away from it. And so going back to the Psalms is some of that inner renewal that I needed that, that I'm able to then share with you all in this setting. Um, so we're going to say a prayer today that we all have inner renewal through God's word. So let us pray. Gracious God and most merciful Father, you have granted us the rich and precious jewel of your holy word. Assist us with your spirit that the same word may be written in our hearts to everlasting comfort, to reform us, to renew us according to your own image, to build us up and edify us into the perfect dwelling place for Christ, sanctifying and increasing in us all heavenly virtues. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen.